When I sometimes discuss the existence of God with atheists or even agnostics, sometimes they will raise what they consider a, a problem, which is the multiverse theory or quantum physics or quantum mechanics. Does the multiverse or does quantum mechanics or anything within quantum mechanics, does that pose a problem to the existence of God, in your opinion? Well, there's a physicist here in California, well-known, Leonard Susskind. Uh, he's an atheist. But he says, we atheists have got to stop using the multiverse. Right. It's a poor argument, and its point is it explains too much. And I've developed an, al an analogy in my book, The Creator and the Cosmos, to make his point. I mean, the multiverse is the idea there's an infinite number of universes where each universe is different from every other universe. And therefore, by pure chance, you're going to get a universe just like ours. Yeah. By that same argument, you're going to get a universe with an infinite variety of birch tree species. And birch trees peel white pieces of bark. And if you've got an infinite number of universes, one of those species will peel pieces of bark uh, that measure just like A4 sheets of paper. They'll be rectangular, they'll have the same dimensions, the same color, and an infinite number of universes, uh, those pieces of white bark are going to fall on soils uh, with an infinite variety of chemicals in them that will make markings on those white pieces of bark. And uh, if you collect all those white pieces of bark, they will duplicate all the research papers published by every research scientist in the world throughout human history, which means all those research papers didn't come from the minds of those scientists. The multiverse did it. And my whole point is a philosophical one. If you're going to appeal to a multiverse, to say there is no personal God that's designed the universe, at the same time, you're eliminating all the designs that we human beings have achieved. Hmm. And so you're committing a philosophical inconsistency there. Yeah. But I've that also argued there's a way to put it to the test positively in this sense. If there is no God behind all this design that we see, then if we continue to measure the universe and its components in greater detail, you're going to reach a point where the design you're discovering, instead of getting more spectacular in its fine-tuned features to make our existence possible, will level off and begin to decline. Right. And we've never seen Not that. Not seeing that, no. It's gone up, and it's always gone up on all size scales. Yeah. So that's a positive way you can put the atheist version. Now, as a Christian, there are ways I could frame the multiverse so it would be consistent with the Bible. But I've discovered, though, we try to frame it in a way that uh, it supports an atheistic worldview, you get these internal contradictions. Only from a Christian perspective can you have God creating an infinite number of universes uh, where there's no contradictions. And one thing I notice, the people propose a multiverse uh, from a non-theistic perspective, they all admit that their speculations are subject to the space-time theorems. Hmm. So they're not eliminating deism. They're mainly going after theism. Right, right. And what about quantum physics? Well, quantum physics is part of the evidence uh, for fine-tuning that points to a god. Yeah. Because the uncertainties are absolutely essential. If you don't have quantum uncertainties, you're not going to have stable atoms and molecules, and we need that for life. Hmm. And when you actually examine uh, how much uncertainty you need, make the uncertainty slightly bigger or slightly lesser, you eliminate the possibility of life. Right. And that's also true statistical mechanics. Uh, the uncertainties we see in statistical mechanics, likewise, must be extraordinarily fine-tuned to make life possible. Hmm. I mean, for example, inside the cell, there's machines that take advantage of the uncertainties in statistical mechanics. And to change that uncertainty slightly, those proteins don't work. Right. And uh, no life is possible. Uh, so at the quantum level, we see fine-tuned designs just like we do everywhere else. And there's no evidence that quantum physics existed before or causally prior to the universe. Is that correct? Well, there are people who are speculating uh, quantum gravity theories, hmm. basically making the point that if we speculate in a very early era of the universe, 
where we have no capacity to do laboratory experiments to put our speculations to the test. They're basically saying maybe quantum mechanics operates so differently in that realm, hmm. uh, basically the first 10 to the minus 43 seconds of the existence of the universe, that perhaps we can get around the space-time theorems. But I've written about this in The Crater and the Cosmos, the fourth edition of that book. We're now able to develop experiments and observations where we can at least probe somewhere inside the quantum gravity era. Uh, for example, when we look at the images of distant quasars, um, if you've got large quantum space-time fluctuations in the quantum gravity era, mm. large enough that you've got a possibility of bypassing the conclusions of the space-time theorems, those space-time quantum fluctuations will actually blur the images of distant quasars. We astronomers don't see the blurring. Right. So it tells us that the quantum space-time fluctuations and the quantum gravity era are not as large as what the atheists need. Okay. And uh, our observations of uh, black hole uh, event horizons hmm. has the potential to probe even deeper into the quantum gravity era. And this just simply makes the point. We can never uh, eliminate all the speculations that the non-theists will propose. Hmm. But uh, what we notice is, the more we push back the frontiers of ignorance, the stronger the evidence comes becomes for the God of the Bible. A hundred percent of the observational and experimental evidence uh, supports Christian theism. Right. Uh, so the atheists always have to appeal to things we can't measure.